This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by our friends over at Students for Sensible Drug Policy. Open up ssdp.org to learn more about how to join or start a chapter at your school or to sign up as an ongoing monthly financial supporter of the most effective agents of change in drug and cannabis policy reform. Once again, that's ssdp.org. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Friday, November 10th, 2017, and you're tuned in to episode 371 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our top story of the day is a piece by John Schroyer over at Marijuana Business Daily looking into the sinking prospects of mass roots. The cannabis social media network slash dispensary finder slash POS provider slash regulations tracking company that's most recently crawled into the headlines with the ouster of founder and CEO Isaac Dietrich. Massroots has been one of the more well-known legal cannabis companies over the last few years, claiming to have more than a million active users on its social media network while burning through tens of millions of dollars in venture capital funding. The company has struggled to generate any kind of meaningful revenue and was criticized for overpaying on a planned $12 million all-stock acquisition of regulations tracking company Canaregs, a deal that was ultimately scuttled within the chaos of the board firing Mr. Dietrich. As John's reporting over at Marijuana Business Daily, the company, which once had 31 employees, is down to a full-time headcount as low as four and no higher than 10. This is a good one to open up and read. Legal marijuana sales in Colorado continue to be strong with a third straight month of figures higher than $130 million. According to some taxi math by the cannabis, the Mile High State pulled in $136.6 million in legal cannabis sales for the month of September, bringing the state's total yearly haul up to $1.16 billion, up from the $974 million the state had brought in by the same month the previous year. Of September's total, just over $100 million came in from the adult use side of the market, with the remaining $35 million in sales on the medical side. Our final top story of the day is the news out of Maryland that Patrick Jameson, the executive director of the state's Medical Cannabis Commission, is resigning after a year and a half on the job. Mr. Jameson, a former state trooper, didn't give a reason for his choice to step down beyond releasing a statement saying, quote, the time has come for me to pursue other interests, unquote. As regular listeners should know, Maryland's medical marijuana industry has been slow to start up as various controversies over business licensing have plagued it from its opening days. Currently, the state is looking at a December 8th deadline for licensed dispensaries to get up and running. We'll certainly track this one as it progresses. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz out on headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, Students for Sensible Drug Policy. You know them, you love them, you should either belong as a member of your local school chapter or support them with your monthly financial contributions. SSDP is one of legal marijuana's most powerful weapons of progression, and we need to give them all the support they need to keep up the fight. Get in the game by opening up ssdp.org and taking it from there. Step up and make a difference. One more time, that's ssdp.org. All right, time for the Blitz. Delaware's two open and operational medical marijuana dispensaries are going to have the state's market all to themselves for at least another six months after a planned third shop's opening was pushed back due to construction and zoning issues. Medical marijuana operator Columbia Care's new dispensary is licensed for the state's Kent County and will, assuming everything else goes smoothly, open up sometime in the spring. A kerfuffle's a brewing in Massachusetts as a law firm representing a number of medical marijuana dispensaries is trying to carve out protection for existing shops to get an early jump on adult use sales while also hindering a much lauded program to help entrepreneurs from communities that have historically borne the brunt of the worst effects on the war on marijuana get a foothold in the state's legal cannabis market. The Boston-based law firm of Foley Hogg sent a memo last week to the state's Cannabis Control Commission proposing that dispensaries taking part in the expedited licensing program afforded to members of the aforementioned communities be forced to operate as nonprofits. The memo also requested that small-scale cooperative licensing be delayed so that established shops can get their license situation worked out first. 
I think our friend Shaleen Title, who is an on hiatus regular on our weekly show Marijuana Today and one of the five members of the state's Cannabis Control Commission, said it nicely when she told the Boston Globe, quote, It's hard for me to imagine a scenario where we would disregard the legislature, the general public, and state law, all which have been clear that the development of craft marijuana cultivator cooperatives is a priority, unquote, and that the expedited licensing program was needed to help people who, quote, lost their jobs, homes, children, and most importantly, their freedom for using and selling cannabis, unquote. Open up the Boston Globe for the full read on this one. The Detroit Free Press has a good story up about the work the state of Michigan is doing to prepare for handling the large influx of cash it expects to get once its newly expanded medical marijuana system spools up next year. And we're talking literal cash. Banking and financial services is one of our industry's bigger stories. And as Michigan is about to really learn, things can get complicated quickly when you have an entire industry that has to move around its money in actual physical dollars. The state of Vermont came really close this year to being the first to legalizing adult use marijuana via the legislative process. Seven Days Vermont has a good catch up piece that looks at the likely scenario of that happening again sometime in 2018, as the state legislature will pick back up on the topic when it meets again in January. If you're into Green Mountain State news, this is a good one to open up. A new poll out of Georgia shows that 77% of adults living in the state are in favor of the legalization of medical marijuana, with just 19% opposed. The medical marijuana question was run by Georgia College as part of their 2017 State of the State poll and drew from a sample size of 494 residents randomly selected statewide. It has a margin of error of plus or minus 4.4%. The Columbia Journalism Review has an interesting story up about a marijuana culture magazine published in Mexico that's having trouble getting licensing from the government to remain in print. Even though the country has recently legalized medical marijuana, government officials say the magazine Canimo goes too far in promoting the use of what they say is, quote, a prohibited substance, unquote. This is another good one to open up for the full digest. And finally for today, Canadian licensed medical marijuana company Aurora Cannabis is reporting strong growth in its financial numbers for the latest fiscal quarter. According to the press release published over at New Cannabis Ventures, the company booked $8.2 million Canadian in revenue in quarter one of 2018, up 196% over their total for the year previous. In that same time period, they say they sold the equivalent of 1,962 pounds of cannabis to their customer ranks, which now number over 20,000. Open up new cannabis ventures for the rest of the numbers here. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again on Monday with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at MJTodayDaily and visit our website at MJTodayDaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, SSDP, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at MJTodayDaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.